Well, hello there, everyone. It's great to be back on your TV as we do another update for the city of Belleville as we deal with these COVID-19 times. And I want to start off uh, again by saying a very big thank you to um, the women and men who work for your TV, uh, who have been um, keep giving us this opportunity to communicate during this COVID-19 outbreak. Um, I hope that uh, you found this information informative and, uh, and helpful to understand what the city's doing. And we want to thank your TV for this uh, great opportunity. They really are a community um, media station, if I can call them that, and we appreciate their efforts here in our local community. Uh, this update is for the week of May the 24th, and uh, today finds me in the uh, council chambers on the fourth floor at Belleville City Hall. Uh, you know that over the past um, number of months we've been uh, renovating uh, the Belleville City Council chambers. This is really the first renovation that we've had since uh, 1988 when uh, the City Hall was expanded to include the third and a fourth floor. And um, workers have been uh, very busy uh, working in a safe environment, but you can see behind me the new city council uh, table and uh, it's going to be a lot more brighter. Uh, in particular, you're not going to see a lot of the upgrades that we did with respect to IT information technology, a lot of the wiring, uh, things that just hadn't been updated and was necessary. Um, but um, you can see um, the, the sort of the, the background uh, with the lobby uh, or the, the gallery area. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, not just this project being finished, but that Belleville City Council can meet again in person. And so um, depending on the state of Ontario, uh, we will do that uh, when we receive permission. Um, but uh, I thought I'd give you a quick uh, sneak peek of the progress that's been happening and it's moving along well. So uh, as I always start off with some numbers and today's numbers are, uh, this week's numbers starting off the week are a little delayed because of the holiday Monday for Victoria Day. And so there was a delay in reporting um, and on Tuesday, uh, they gave uh, a couple of days of information. But prior to that, at the beginning of the week, we started off with um, having five new cases, um, but with recoveries, we have seen our numbers drop to 43 active cases in our region. So uh, we will continue to see that number go up and down as we go through uh, the coming weeks, uh, but that is very good. We're down uh, to a much more uh, acceptable uh, level. Um, of those 43 active cases in the Hastings and Prince Edward Health Unit region, we have 11 uh, individuals who are hospitalized Six of those 11 are in intensive care and, uh, and six uh, people are on a ventilator. So um, I know the six and the six doesn't exactly equal the 11, but it is um, sort of the, the way the numbers were on the discharge. Um, the good news um, is in vaccinations. But before I get to the good news, I'll just uh, finish up on the reporting. There are now being 1,099 cases of COVID at the beginning of this week from the beginning of the outbreak. Um, and um, there have been 462 variants of concern. Variants of concern are those mutated COVID-19 viruses that uh, we have to stay one step ahead of. Um, but those are good numbers uh, for us. We've seen some good reduction. I want to encourage everyone to keep up the good work of washing your hands, wearing a mask, and watching your distance um, so that we can keep that uh, spread uh, very, very low. Now, the good news, which I always like to share, is vaccinations. And uh, to start this week, uh, we had 83,664 uh, individuals having been vaccinated in our health unit. 46% of our population has received its first dose. I expect with this two-day catch-up later on in the week that we will be into the 50 percentile area. And um, 6,013 individuals have received both doses. So they are fully vaccinated and those are exceptional numbers. Um, uh, some really good news as I've been talking about next week uh, on Monday, the 31st of May, the Quinney Sports and Wellness Center will open up the family dental clinic arena for a vaccination uh, center, a mass immunization uh, facility. Uh, the health unit will be operating it. The city's donated that space and we are expecting that will bring us capacity of another 2,500 individuals per day who can receive the vaccine. And that is very, very good news. I wanna thank 
the federal and provincial governments for continuing to work through this process uh, to get us the supply of vaccines that makes this clinic uh, now uh, possible. And, uh, and I encourage everyone to go to the provincial uh, portal and to register um, and to keep going back. You know, I, I know some folks have had some frustration uh, because you're not able to get on right away or it's not showing appointments. Obviously, we can only put these appointments up when we're ready to, uh, to do it. But I think you will see that with this uh, additional facility uh, coming online, you will see more and more openings or booking slots available. So uh, please uh, keep, uh, keep going to it and uh, don't get frustrated. Um, outdoor facilities are open and what a crazy Friday we had last week. Um, we received word late in the day from the provincial government that uh, in addition to golf courses and tennis courts uh, being open, they were also going to allow municipalities to open up our splash pads. And uh, we then had to wait for um, the health unit to review the changes the province had uh, permitted and to provide instructions for us on uh, operating, but most importantly on the um, sanitization protocols. So we received that information at 4.35 on the Friday of the long weekend. And uh, I always want to thank our operations staff, the folks that help with outdoors. They were amazing. On Saturday, we had the municipal uh, splash pads open by noon. And uh, some of our employees came in on the weekend. They had, uh, had booked it off like many of us had the weekend off. Um, but because of the, the fact that it was so warm on the weekend, we wanted to have these splash pads up. They came in to open them, and I am certainly uh, so grateful to all of them. We're so proud of our municipal employees throughout this whole pandemic, and um, uh, you know that's another indication. So our splash pads are open, and uh, I hope that it gave some relief to some of our uh, children in the community. Um, I know I've had a number of questions regarding the Kinsman Outdoor Pool that's on Dundas Street, and uh, we don't have permission at this point to open it. Um, we normally open it in the month of July uh, for, the, for the summer, um, and we're waiting to see. If we do get permission uh, to open it before uh, the month of July, then we will uh, make an announcement, uh, particularly to make sure that our weekends are covered. Um, but we do expect that we will be open and uh, people to use it uh, in July this year. Again, that will require the provincial government to make that decision, and we're just waiting to, uh, to hear from them, but our staff have uh, got it ready to go, and uh, it'll just take some minor um, reopening uh, steps, but uh, we're excited about that as well. So the splash pads are open, the outdoor pool, the Kinsman Outdoor Pool uh, will be open uh, at some point when we're permitted. All of our playgrounds are open, the boat launches are open, uh, our marina uh, opens, um, uh, this week, this weekend, uh, so we have uh, the Myers Pier and um, Victoria Island. Uh, they will open. Other private uh, marinas are opening, so uh, folks are really getting the ability to enjoy the outdoors and to take full advantage of it. Um, the Canada flag. A lot of people ask me about that. Uh, you know, a few weeks ago, I showed some pictures of being at the greenhouse with uh, our uh, city staff that are growing all of the hanging baskets and the flower arrangements, including the edible arrangements where we grow uh, food and donate it to the food bank. But everyone always asks about that big, huge, beautiful Canada flag that you can see on the 401 and the 40,000 uh, different uh, uh, fl uh, flowers that are part of it. Um, we expect that to be um, finalized this week. They started work on it last week and uh, it'll be ready to go for the beginning of June. Um, the last thing I just want to talk a little bit about today is uh, some, some sad news, but you know it's understandable. With the decision last week by the provincial government, uh, pop-ups on the Bay 2021 will be delayed a couple of weeks. We were originally planning on opening it on June the 4th, um, but with the announcement that the, the province made last week, uh, it looks like about June the 14th, unless they change their minds, and uh, we'll have to see. But uh, we expect that on uh, June the 14th or so, we will be able to open up uh, this season's pop-ups. Uh, we have uh, more uh, vendors that are there. Uh, those that had a really successful 2020 are back. And we're looking forward to providing that uh, service at Zwick's Park. Uh, I was down there uh, last week taking a look at it and uh, everything is ready to go. We're just waiting for permission to be able to, to reopen. 
The last thing I want to just uh, uh, share with you is a photo here of the um, Butterfly Run uh, exhibit that was opened last week at Swigs Park. Um, a number of parents in our community have lost uh, infants uh, either before they were born of, um, or shortly after, and uh, and it's difficult. Uh, you know, you're delivering these uh, these babies uh, in a maternity ward when many people are having such joy welcoming a new member to their family, and the pain is real for those uh, mothers and fathers of. Um, of newborns who have passed away. And this exhibit here has been uh, a couple years in, in the making. Um, there, have be, there has been a wonderful butterfly run uh, for the last couple of years, the city of Belleville has supported and uh, they raise money. And some of this money has gone to pay for this exhibit. And so you can see it when you're on the trail at Westwick's Park. Uh, the idea is for um, uh, you know parents who have lost uh, an infant uh, to be able to go there and to uh, remember and to honor and to have a, a quiet moment of reflection and to uh, to to uh, to be able to process that that experience, we uh, it really is an exhibit of love. And uh, I was so proud to uh, to be able to cut the ribbon last week of that exhibit. And I want to thank all the organizers. So with that, I am uh, done for this week, and uh, we are looking forward to showing you the remaining progress behind me of City Council Chambers and the Public Gallery in the coming weeks. Uh, if you have any questions or any concerns, uh, please re don't uh, hesitate to reach out to me or any member of Belleville City Council. Uh, we're here to work for you and we hope that you have a wonderful week and I'll be back in touch with you next week with another update from the City of Belleville.